Hey all, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at the T30 smartwatch. This is a fairly inexpensive budget-oriented smartwatch that sells for around 50 bucks and has a round display. Aside from that, it also has the ability for you to answer phone calls and make calls directly on the watch since there is a built-in microphone as well as speaker. In addition, it also has some local music storage capabilities just like with Amazfit's more expensive smartwatches. It can store about a playlist worth of music on it and then you can connect the watch using wireless TWS headphones and then listen to music that you can play and store directly on the watch itself, using it like an mp3 player, even if you don't connect it to your smartphone, which is a pretty neat function. The other areas of the watch, though, are fairly simple and standard these days. It has functions like heart rate monitoring, as well as blood pressure monitoring, can track your sleep. So they're calling this a call and music smartwatch. The display measures 1.3 inches diagonally. It's an IPS panel, and it is also IP67 rated. So you can use this even if it's raining, if it gets a bit of water splashed on it, and it should still survive. If you're using in a power saving mode, it should last you for over a week before you need to recharge it again, just like most of the other more budget smartwatches and fitness trackers we've seen. It doesn't really have as advanced of a OS as something like Android Wear, which is more power hungry. However, if you're using it with all the sensors turned on, it will get you closer to about four to five days before you need to recharge it again, which is still decent overall. Now inside here, we do get a watch strap that looks pretty fancy, has this synthetic leather texture to it, but on the other side, it actually is made out of rubber, so it feels nice on your skin, but looks professional on the outside. And we also get the watch itself. It's a rather large uh, watch, by the way, it has definitely a heft to it. You'll also find a black colored strap for a slightly different look, also has a leather-like texture but made out of rubber on the other side, so it's fully waterproof. And we also get the quick user guide as well as the charging cable. It is using a proprietary magnetic charging system that snaps onto place. So here's the watch itself if we take a closer look at the design. The tempered glass display underneath that does have a few etchings on the glass that tells you kind of the markings if you're using it with an analog watch face to quickly make out the time. It has more of a sporty vibe to it. Definitely has a slightly thicker bezel around it. A little reminiscent of say the Samsung Galaxy watch, uh, but overall still looks good enough. Has a very solid weight because the body is made out of a aluminum unibody chunk, including all the parts that connects to the removable watch strap. Is all made out of metal. Metal, so it feels very solid, and then glass in the top. The side here does have two keys, one for power by long holding, and also for taking you through the interface going back. And on the very rear of the watch, we do have the optical heart rate sensor, the charging contacts, and that is pretty much it. And turn the unit on. Here's what it looks like while charging, by the way. So a nice little animation there, and a quick size comparison. The Stratos might look a little bit larger, but in fact the real dimensions are quite close. And in terms of thickness, the Stratos is going to be a bit more bulky, but the weight of both are actually not too far off. So this is definitely a watch for folks that have slightly larger wrists, I'd say. And then again, something small and petite like the Amazfit Bip, you can see the difference there. The display of the watch actually looks pretty decent in terms of the overall visibility and the viewing angles are concerned. Definitely is a decent quality IPS panel. If anything, I will say that it can be a tad slower to respond at times, such as waking up the display. It takes a split second, as you can see there, after tapping on the key there. However, once the watch is turned on, the overall UI and the menu navigation is pretty smooth. We can change the watch dial just by long holding for a few seconds and then just cycling up and down to go through a few different options. Most of these will be kind of analog in style to take the full advantage of the round nature of the screen. It does fill up the parameters pretty well. It looks like a much more expensive watch than you'll expect, as aforementioned. Uh, there's a few other digital options as well if you want to change up the look and uh, try something different. They all look quite attractive overall, I have to say, uh, for a budget smartwatch. I can swipe down, by the way, to take a look at some quick shortcuts things like turning on do not disturb mode as well as changing the brightness of the screen. I can then swipe down to go into the list of all the different widgets and applications at a quick glance including the dialer pad since again this watch does have a built-in microphone that you can use to answer phone calls with uh, which is pretty neat so you're able to then just uh, make calls directly if you're connected using Bluetooth. A nice little feature there. I can swipe over from the edge to go back by one page, look at my contacts as well as my previous uh, history of calls. Swiping down once again will 
take me into a list of how many steps I've walked during the past day, as well as calories burned and distance converted. Once again, to take a look at sleep for the day, it will track sleep at nighttime during the regular hours, but if you're sleeping at noon or taking a nap, it won't necessarily track that as sleep, just something to quickly keep in mind. Next over is going to be your continuous heart rate. Same thing goes with blood pressure monitoring as well as SpO2 for blood oxygen monitoring is also baked in. We can also go into sports tracking as well to choose a activity that we want to track a session for. So with this, you're able to then uh, kind of begin and see how many calories and steps as well as your heart rate continuously during a sport activity. And in terms of the options that we have here, most of these are uh, a little bit hard to make out at first because they're using icons and they don't have any descriptions in terms of words, but uh, it includes different sports like soccer, basketball, badminton, jumping rope, walking and running, and then just cycles back into this main screen in this carousel view. So overall, uh, the UI does work pretty well for scrolling up and down. I can swipe over from the right, by the way, to take a look at more settings. So things like turning on the alarm, I can also set on the watch itself uh, to help wake me up or alert me of certain things. I can begin a timer, pretty simple stuff, sedentary to get you to move after a few minutes of an activity. Uh, swiping over from the left, by the way, will also tell you any notifications. Things like text messages from social media will also populate there for you to quickly view uh, if you're connected using Bluetooth. By the way, tapping on the red key once will turn off the display manually, and tapping on the bottom key once will bring you into the sh music widget screen automatically as a quick shortcut. This will allow you to play back music if you're connected using your phone as a remote, as well as play back music on the watch's memory itself. You can connect it using the charging cable to your computer, and then drag the files over into the watch's uh, drive. It will show up just like a USB thumb drive. And we can select between the sources just by tapping on this middle icon there, whether you want to play back music sent over from the phone or on the watch's memory directly. Now the interface though is a little bit on the primitive side. What that means is you aren't able to have another view such as a list of all the songs that you can scroll through or sort by artist or by kind of alphabetical. Uh, it doesn't really have that capability in the software, which is something I would like to see in the future just to make it a little easier to skip through. So now a quick demo of the speaker quality through the watch. We're playing back a song stored on the watch's memory directly right now, transferred over using the USB cable. So actually for a speaker built into a watch, it's not bad. The companion application is called Dairy Fit, so it's another generic app. This one here is very simple, but it will allow you to save the number of steps you've taken as well as the transfer information over. Syncing is relatively quick, and so it, there wasn't too much delay in terms of uh, refreshing the data. You're also able to see your calories burned. Other statistics like SpO2 and heart rate will also be transferred over without really any issues. And under device properties, you can also take a look at the battery life remaining, find your device, take images from the phone's camera using the watch as a selfie remote, take a look at what types of notifications you want to pass through, as well as other types of gestures that you want to turn on. Now under the dial selection is probably the most interesting part, that's where you can customize the watch screen a little bit more. So there's the ones which are built in, but aside from that, they even give you the option to discover more dials, so there's a handful of additional options that you can download and also push over. Again, the catalog isn't as extensive as say an Apple Watch watch or even a Mace Fitz watches, but at least it gives you a few more options if you want to explore them. And there we have it. The new watch face has been successfully pushed over as you can see here and also looks pretty elegant. As far as the accuracy of the watch in terms of the pedometer and steps, I would say it's okay. Maybe not quite as precise as say an Apple watch or even some of the more expensive Mace Fit trackers, but it gets you a close enough estimate of how much steps you're completing. Heart rate monitor is pretty good in terms of the accuracy, similar at least in my comparison with some of the other trackers I tried recently and giving me a rough idea of what my resting and regular heart rate is throughout the day. 
So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on look at this uh, T30 smartwatch. I think more than anything for this affordable price, it definitely has a more expensive uh, design than you'll expect for the completely round dial as well as the fake leather straps. It all feels pretty well constructed and put together along with a aluminum chassis and the fact that you're able to store music directly on the watch's memory is a pretty neat feature as well as the built-in microphone and speaker. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. It's been the T30 Budget Smart Watch.